to talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report. Every week he puts out new issues Monday morning. He puts a, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out right under the front page of TFNN. You go over to the newsletters tab. You will see the Tiger Forex report. You can sign up, folks. It's $97. You get a couple webinar archives in there as well. You can cancel at any time. You pay nothing if it's within the first 30 days. It's a great deal. Check it out. And, of course, don't forget about he's got a couple webinars here talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. A recent webinar he did. That's available under the services tab as well as Japanese candlestick patterns. But we're going to talk a little bit of Forex and a little commodities this morning. Teddy Kegzat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, it always seems like we're having eventful days when you're on. But there, there are many eventful days in this market recently. Um, Maybe if we can kick it off with the dollar index, Teddy. Quite the day yesterday. We have yields kind of, you know, driving some of that action. I, I, where do you want? I, I know they're all related, but where do you want to kick things off this morning? You know what? A dollar index is a great place, and all I can say is the Tiger Forex report readers must love having tomorrow's Wall Street Journal today, huh? <laughs> you know, I mean, talk about nailing the low in the dollar index yesterday. You know, for right now, it's establishing a nice little range trade in front of the Fed meeting. And the bottom yesterday, I think, was really, really nice. You know, yields had a nice retracement going on for a couple of days, and now they're starting to hammer to, you know, support again. I think you're going to see that trend continue, you know. I mean, no matter what you say, the economic numbers and the data that's been coming out, you know, even though it may not be as frightening as it has been over the past two years, it's still atrocious, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, that's the reality of things, you know. So, uh, and I, yeah, I think that right now we hit a nice low in the dollar index yesterday. Um, do I see us having a major rally over the next week? No, I think that we're going to hold the low. We made, a, we made a lower swing low yesterday, okay? But this is on a correction. The overall trend for the dollar index is a major bull. So right now we're, we're establishing that range trade in front of the Fed meeting. And, you know, we're going to trade pretty much, I think, a little bit sideways to higher over the next week as we head into it, you know, especially by the time we get to Tuesday, you know, we're going to go into a flatline trade, which speaking of flatline trade, look at the U.S. dollar yen. That thing's been hovering against, butting up, butting up against resistance, and it literally has become a flatline trade. You know, so I think that we're we're hitting some extremes on the trends, you know, and we're definitely going to push it because yields are step, definitely p poking higher again. And you know, I don't care what the the overall consensus is. The reality is, scoreboard is scoreboard. Yields are pushing higher, and you can't. I would not try and fight that trend. Yeah, there's no denying that. Recently, and pretty interesting, I was going to jump to, I know you love looking at the 30-year along with other parts of the, the curve, of course, but um, how about the move, Teddy, from 107 to 110 and change in terms of three points? I know the move's been pretty dramatic in both ways. Uh, anyway, I see, you know, just, just mammoth moves on the 30-year, especially the 10-year um, up and down the chain. But like you said, we're still sitting at 4.9% right now on the 10-year, which is a pretty remarkable number that you can't deny coming into a Fed meeting. Are you looking for any volatility with the Fed, do you think they're going to pause as, as many suspect is the case right now, at least in this meeting coming up? Does that, do you, do you take that into account? Do you have any biases there? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I know that overall the, uh, the bias or consensus, if you will, is that they are going to hold and pause right now. Everyone does see the Fed possibly within the next six months raising one more time, but they think they're going to digest what they've done over the last year. I, I don't buy that. Um, you, here, here's my rationale with that is um, we, we talked about flight to quality last week, especially with all the conflicts that's going on in the world right now. We, we don't have flight to quality in the bond market right now. We have it in the dollar, you know, so and I think that overall, especially, you know, I, t I dwell on the 30 year because the long term drives rates in the long term. But if you look at the volume in the short terms, you know, I mean, you haven't seen the volumes in the euros, the one, the two, three and five year notes that, like you have recently in a very long time, you know, and I think that that is going to continue to cook, you know. So and I think that as that boils over over the next month or two, um, I, I think that that's going to it's going to put pressure on the Fed, you know, the market rate, no matter what, you know, if you look at relatively where we're at. Um, all the interest rate markets should be much lower in pricing. Right now, we're at a premium. We're not at a discount for fair value. You know, so even if the Fed doesn't do anything, 
we should be at a fundamental and technical basis lower than we are right now. So I think the market's going to keep on pressing no matter what the Fed does, you know, but I do believe, I still think that there's a, a much better chance of them still hiking in this next meeting next week than people are. I, w- I would I would not really lean on this or, be, or say that, you know what, the Fed is going to do nothing. You know, I wouldn't say that next week's going to be a non-event. Could it be? Absolutely. Um, but I would not be, I wouldn't be shocked if they did raise a quarter point next week. It'd be pretty amazing if they did, right? Right, if they came out and they said, you know what, man, we've been talking about 2% forever and we're not getting there. So why not? Right. Um, right. I know consensus is And wouldn't it be right the there. right time to do it? Because do you want to wait till the December meeting? Are you going to shake up the holidays? You know, especially with the conflict, you know, there's a lot of talk that there's like, oh, the Fed's not going to do anything because of the escalation in the Middle, Middle East with things. Um, that hasn't, they don't care about the escalation in the Middle East. The Fed is, on, they, they're dealing with the economy. They have nothing to do with the war industry. You know, that has nothing to do with their bearings on things, you know? It is. It, so, I was just, you make me think back of when they first started, right? That's when Russia was just happening and they actually probably put off their first hike, right? Is that what happened? And that was a mistake um, yes. for sure. And they probably even came back and said that, um, that they let that kind of, you know, they didn't want to, I think, start that, right? I think it was right around then. Um, just makes me think of the same thing, right? Allowing something like that to get into it and, and you see where we are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, what about crude? We got to talk a little bit of crude, a little bit of a pullback to 83 bucks. But but as we've mentioned, man, a lot of strength. What do you think about crude at these prices, Teddy? Um, well, you know what? The high that we made a few sessions ago, uh, once again, the Tiger Forex report must love the uh, the bow- upper boundary of our critical range there for resistance. Um, I, I think that we're flirting with a key support area. But where we're at right now, I think, is pretty much the floor. Um, Could we see a spike, you know, that could get us down into, like, say, the upper 70 handles? Absolutely. But I would not get married to any type of, uh, you know, short at these levels. I would be looking to be a, a buying of breaks, you know, and especially right now. I would say with 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 the way that the market has pulled back in the crude oil market, I would I would say maybe give it a day or two before you start to look into it. Um, but I would say, especially in front of the weekend and going into the Fed meeting, I would rather be long than short that market. Nice. I like the detailed analysis, man. Wait a day or two, folks, maybe. But yeah, I, I was jumping through the technicals as you were doing it, man. This level, um, at least you got your back against the wall a little bit in terms of an area of support mm-hmm. there, potentially at that $82, $83 area. Teddy, we're coming I appreciate- up a higher swing high also, so that's why I'm also with that buy break forecast. Nice. Yeah, volatility, man, just everywhere in this market. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always. Folks, go check out the Tiger Forex Report. You heard it right under the newsletter tab. You sign up, you pay 97 bucks, you get a money back guarantee for 30 days. You can't go wrong. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, Tommy. Take care. Okay, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. 